Hey there, Adam Brewer, Senior Technical Specialist at Microsoft covering security, compliance, and identity. And I'm back with another installment of my video series. This time, we're not talking about just one product, but two products. Two for the price of one today. So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about integration. It's something we always talk about when we talk about the Microsoft security platform. We have a suite of products that work swimmingly together. And today we're talking about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Cloud App Security. Now what's interesting is a lot of people think suite or best in suite is code for our individual products aren't that good. Well, not the case here. In fact, the two products we're talking about today are quite possibly our most award-winning of all our security solutions. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is our next generation antivirus, EDR, and threat and vulnerability management platform. And it is award-winning from practically any IT analyst. Go look at Gartner's Magic Quadrant for endpoint protection platforms. We're the farthest upper right, highest in ability to execute. Go look at Forrester's Wave for endpoint protection platforms. We're farthest upper right. Fact is, we're really successful in that space. Cloud App Security, same thing. Go look at Gartner's Magic Quadrant for Cloud Access Security Brokers. We're farthest upper right again. Again, highest on the axis for ability to execute. The fact is, our solutions are not only great as a platform, but they're individually great too. So you can get both best and sweet, and I apologize for the buzzword here, but best in breed as well. Now, what are we doing with integration today? Well. For any cloud access security broker, one of the primary use cases is to see what your users are doing as far as different SaaS applications. What are they accessing? What tools are they using? What is the shadow IT? We already have Defender for Endpoint running on our endpoints, and we can use that to capture all of its telemetry and learn where our users are going, how much data they're sending there, etc. We don't need a proxy server. We don't need a log collector. We don't need another agent, gross agent running on our endpoints. We can do it seamlessly with the solution that's already on that endpoint. It's a really cool opportunity. Now, we can use Cloud App Security to sift through that data and understand which SaaS applications are being used. And we do some really interesting things where we can categorize SaaS applications by compliance audits they may or may not have passed, their security posture, their overall risk score. And you can use this information to make decisions over whether you want to allow the app or not. Even better, we can automate that. So we can look for things like, has this SaaS application passed an ISO 27001 audit? If the answer is no, then block it from all my endpoints. And so the combination of Cloud App Security and Defender for Endpoint can do that. And then one other thing we're going to talk about today briefly is that Microsoft Defender for Endpoint also supports web content filtering. This is something you used to buy another solution for, probably had another gross endpoint running on your devices or a proxy server or something like that. Again, built in with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, no additional subscriptions, no additional services needed, just part of the platform. So I'm going to show that to you as well. So let's, let's head over to the portal and let's get started. This is the Microsoft Defender Security Center. And here's where I turn on that integration with Microsoft Cloud App Security. Are you ready for how complicated it is to turn on this integration between these two products? I turn this slider to on. That's it. Done. Integration done. I've now integrated my CASB and my endpoint protection platform. Now, I also mentioned we're going to talk about web content filtering, so I'm going to show you where I turned that on. It's right here. Now I have turned on both of those capabilities. Next, let's jump over to the Cloud App Security portal. And here's where I can turn on this additional capability to block apps that I have unsanctioned inside of Cloud App Security. So I can still integrate the platforms for the purpose of discovery, but if I want to do that blocking, this is just one more box I got to check, and now I'm done, fully integrated. So let's head over to my Cloud Discovery dashboard here in Microsoft Cloud App Security, and this is showing me all the different SaaS applications that my users are accessing from their endpoints. Now notice the report. This is coming from my Windows 10 endpoint users. So there's a variety of ways Cloud App Security can get this visibility into the SaaS applications your users are accessing. But what's nice about this is this is agentless. You don't need to install an additional agent. You're just using Defender for Endpoint that's already there. This doesn't require a proxy. This doesn't require log forwarding. It doesn't require anything. You're already set up to use it. And now you have full discovery regardless of where those devices go. 
you know, like if all your people are working from home. So I can see all of my different applications that my users are accessing, how much traffic has been sent to them, and overall risk score we assign the application. And I start to get into some third-party SaaS apps here like Dropbox, LinkedIn, Yahoo, Twitter, Facebook. Now notice over here, some of them have a green checkbox and some of them have a red circle with a slash. So green checkbox means it's sanctioned, LinkedIn is cool, uh, but the red circle and slash means it's not okay, like Twitter and Facebook. Now, I can manually just click on any one of these to do that. So if I wanted to, uh, for example, let's see, it looks like the Twitter widget. If I wanted to unsanction that, I could check the circle with the slash and click OK. And now it's going to start blocking that on my endpoints running Windows Defender for endpoint. It'll take a little while for this to cycle through, but yes, that'll eventually happen. Now, what's really interesting is not only the ability to do this manually, by clicking applications that have been discovered, but to do this programmatically. So for over 16,000 different SaaS applications, our professional staff have gone through and done some fact finding on these different applications. So we have these, what I like to call a one pager essentially that shows you security compliance, legal posture, uh, overall information on different SaaS apps. And then we kind of run them all together and spit out a risk score. So you see here's Facebook, the risk score is five. And we look at different security um, postures and different compliance audits that they could have or could not have submitted to. And you'll notice that when you hover over any one of them, like ISO 27001 here, I can click the little I, and it tells me the source is Cloud Analyst. So again, our professional staff, this is not just crowdsourced information. Now, all of this, I can write policy against. So here is an app discovery policy where I am going to look for apps that have not passed an ISO 27001 audit. It equals false. And I'm going to look for any apps where there's been more than 20 people using it in a single day. And if all of that is true, then I'm going to do is I'm going to tag the app as unsanctioned. That's super powerful. Now we're automatically watching what my users are doing. And when too many of them are using an app that doesn't meet my organization's policies, I can automatically block them from continuing to use it. And I, it's not just limited to compliance factors. I could look for legal risk factors or security risk factors or that overall risk score I showed you, I could say if it is between zero and five, so under 10, and I could write a policy that way as well. So very, very, very powerful here, not only to do it manually, but to do it automatically. And finally, I wanted to show you web content filtering because I'm gonna demo this all together when we switch over to my endpoint. Here I'm looking at my web content filtering categories. And I can break any one of these out. For example, under leisure, I'm blocking just games. I'm not blocking chat or IM or professional or social networking or web-based email. I could, but not in this case. And so the experience on the devices that I'm targeting, I'm, I'm picking specific device groups. They're going to get a block message when they try to access them. So now let's jump over to my endpoint and show you how this all works in action. We're here on my endpoint running Microsoft Defender for endpoint. And let's first try to go to a site we think should work. Here's Outlook Online as part of my Microsoft 365. No problem, right in. Let's go to an app that we had unsanctioned inside of Cloud App Security like Facebook or Twitter. Blocked on both of them. We get an error message that says it's blocked by my organization. Now let's try to use one of those web content filters. Slightly different experience, but should get the same result. So we're gonna to try to go to Arcadium, which is an online games website. We're gonna get a message that it's blocked. Slightly different error message because it's actually being blocked for a different reason, which can help your help desk or whomever do their troubleshooting, but overall end result is the same. So whether you're using web content filtering or whether you're integrating with Cloud App Security, you not only have visibility into what users are accessing on their endpoints, regardless of the network they sit on, but if you need controls around the type of sites they go to, whether that's specific, whether that's defined by security or compliance posture or type of category, you can do all of that through the integration between Defender for Endpoint and Cloud App Security, and some of it with Defender for Endpoint just by itself. Thanks for watching. See you next week.